If you think the headset's knocking, it's time to start rocking. Hey folks, we are back with another video. And once again, we had a rainy, crappy day outside, so I figured, hey, let's continue working on the Yeti. My plan today was to rebuild the fork, but I decided to do a video on headsets. So servicing headset, since I have to remove this fork anyway, and also solving knock. This headset has a bit of a knock. I know the reason why. It's probably had this knock for who knows how long. Not a bad one, but a knock nonetheless, and it needs to get fixed. So we will go over that in this video, as well as how to properly service a headset, because there's a couple of things that people get wrong. I'm amazed how many uh, bearings I've seen, especially bottom bearings that have been either uh, over torqued, compressed, uh, squished to a point where grease is coming out of them. I had one bike come to me last March where the bottom bearing, literally the seal on the outside was deteriorated just from all the gunk buildup and all the rubbing against it. So, and again, all these problems can get solved. It's actually a very easy fix. So we'll go over that as well, all right? So with all that being said, let's get on with the job. First, I'm gonna start on the bottom with the caliper and work our way up. In this case, I have two five millimeter Allen bolts, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them, and I'm gonna crack them loose. All right, do the bottom, and let's do the top. All right, that is two bolts the same size. Our caliper is off. Let's work on the cable holder. Now this, you have to be careful with. This is a pretty weak bolt. And when, it go, when we get back into installing it, you really have to be careful that you do not strip the threads in the fork. I wish there was a better solution for this, to be honest. But if you're careful enough, you shouldn't have any issues, all right? We take our two and a half and remove the bolt from the lower boot, just like that. Well, nearly like that. Come on. There we go, okay? Leave the bolt in the plastic, no need to remove it, All right? Well, let's go to the top and take out the stem and the, well, the fork. First, we're gonna start off by loosening the stem. Now, you do not need to remove these bolts. Just loosen them by one turn, maybe two turns max, okay? That's all you need to do, done. So next, I'm gonna loosen this top bolt over here, right? The tension bolt. This is what creates tension on the bearings. So this guy, I'm not going to fully remove it yet. I'm going to readjust the camera when I fully remove it or loosen it. All right. I'm going to just leave it there. Let me readjust the camera. So we loosen the bolt, not fully removed yet. The reason I didn't want to fully remove it, I wanted to show you guys what might happen. So if we remove this thing, depending on what type of headset you have, the whole fork might want to drop. So you definitely want to hold the fork on the bottom, okay? Before removing this bolt. So we can take this by hand now. Should be a couple of turns left. There we go. All right. So we're going to take the spacers. I'm going to put them on the side with the bolt. I'm going to take the handlebar. Always hold on to the fork, all right? And I'm just going to let it hang. Just let it flip over and hang. Okay, now I got more spacers over here at the bottom. I'm gonna take those, put them aside. So now we have the headset cap. All right, I'm gonna take out the headset cap, put it on the side, put everything in order so you remember where it's at, all right? And now we are gonna slip out the, in this case, I have a rubber ring, my bearings inside. So, so I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put it on the side. All right, and there, is my fork. Next, we're gonna go into cleaning everything in here and possibly repacking the bearings, depending on the condition that they're in, all right? This is the majority of the headset parts. Typically, the bearings would be with them, but since this is a Chris King headset, the bearings are inside the actual cups that go into the frame, right? So we can't take them out, but we will service them on the bike. We just have to give these guys a quick clean and we're gonna grab some paper towel and clean off any old dirt and grease. Right. Oh, oh, there you go. Okay. So get in there real good. This guy does have a O-ring. 
that we can't take out in order to make sure he is cleaned and I'm grab a towel make sure he's cleaned and we're going to put a dab of grease on this guy before we put him back in okay grab your fingernail put him inside the seat for the seal all right nice and clean Okay, so now what we can do, grab any waterproof grease, right? Just dab it on the seal. Seals always, well, just about always, you need grease on them. Keeps them fresh, keeps them drying up. All right. And we're gonna take this guy. We're gonna put him back in a seat. All the way around and bink. This guy's done. Tension ring. Clean him real well. He's got a little bit of corrosion on him, but nothing to freak out over. Okay. He is good. Now we have another rubber o ring. Clean this guy well. Put him on the side, we will put grease on him in a bit. Clean the underside of the cap where the o-ring sits. So that's the groove the o-ring sits. Okay. Cap is done. These are just the spacers. Just give them a clean wipe in case there's some kind of debris on them. All right. This is a top cap. It allows you to put in a garment or some kind of device. It comes with a mount that you put in there. I had already taken that out. All right, just clean this good. Okay, we are done over here, nearly done. Let's prep this guy, put a little bit of grease on him. Since the only other part that's really gonna get greased. As for assembly, this is the base. Take our split ring, we're gonna put it in here. Okay, then this goes on top of there. And ultimately all this fits inside just like that. All right, and then you put the whole thing on the steer tube. We will show you that later when we do the assembly. All right, next, let's go work on the bearings. So next, we want to check our bearings and clean them out and potentially repack them, right? Now, typical headsets, the bearings will come out from both top and bottom, right? And then you can work on them on the table, take them apart, clean them, repack them, put them back together. This is a Chris King headset. The bearing is set inside the headset cup. I cannot remove it unless I press it out, all right? Which I'm not about to do. So not to say they can't be serviced. I'm not a huge fan of this. I personally like being able to remove bearings and work freely on them as opposed to have to work on them in the frame, uh, but it's not impossible. So first things first is we have to clean everything out of here. We had, Before we open up a Chris King bearing, we need to make sure that it is spotless. Now, I, I had already cleaned both top and bottom, right? But we need to make sure there's absolutely no grit, grime, uh, anything, no debris whatsoever in here because we are gonna open everything up in the actual frame, right? So once you are all set and clean, to open up the seal, okay, they have a split ring here. So what you need to do is grab something very thin and small, not too sharp because you have a split ring and underneath the split ring 
is the bearing seal, and we do not want to damage that bearing seal, right? We have to go underneath the split ring on one side, pop it out, this could be a little bit tricky, and boom, just like that, right? And then we take it out, and we're gonna put it on the side. Now, we have to be careful here. We have our bearing seal. Be very careful, don't damage it. All right, and we're gonna put that on the side. And inside we have our bearings, right? Now, cleaning this is actually a bit of a pain in the butt. In this case, these bearings are in excellent condition, right? I mean, they are in really good condition. Uh, I will not have to do that, right? But if the ears were not in good condition and they were pretty dirty or in bad shape, what you would have to do is put in a degreaser of some type, roll them around, and then take a paper towel, a lint-free paper towel, unlike this one, a lint-free paper towel, and go around and try and clean up everything the best you can, right? And then you blow everything out, and this is key, you have to blow everything out uh, prior to re-greasing it. So you blow everything out, make sure it's dry in there, wait till it dries, and then you apply some grease, all right? Now this one here, as you could see, it's actually in really, really good shape. I am not about to even start trying to remove grease from the inside in here. What I'm gonna do is just put a couple little dabs of grease in there. And to do that, we're just gonna put a little bit, right? So just take a little bit of grease, put them on the edges, just like that. And then just sink it in. Let them touch the bearings. All right. We don't have to put a lot at all. In fact, we don't want to put a lot. And then we're just going to roll this around. And it's going to make its way in. Just like that. Okay. Now, let's take the last little bit over here, put it in there. Okay. So that's how you put the grease in. Next, we're gonna just clean our seal, but dab clean them. Do not stretch clean them. Do not pull on them, right? If you pull on them, you'll tear them. You just wanna dab clean them. This guy's just clean. This guy's real clean. I don't have to worry about him. So then we're gonna put in our seal. Now, he might be a little bit tricky. You gotta make sure he is tucked in and he will fold on you. So make sure there are no folds and make sure that he is in, okay? And when I mean in, he's gotta be in both ledges on each side. Then we take our split ring, clean them. All right, and we put him in. Now tuck in one side underneath just like that and then roll the rest in just like that. Now you will know he is all the way in. Oh, well, he sits in there for starters. Yeah, there you go. So he's not all the way in. There's a bit of a step. You have to spread him out so there is no step on the split, right? So let's try and shove him back a little bit and boom. Nope, still just a little bit of a step. There we go. Now he's in. See, no step. Nice and flat. So the top bearing's done. You would do the exact same thing to the bottom bearing. Unfortunately, with the bottom bearing, you're gonna have to either work from the bottom or you're gonna flip the frame upside down, right? So a bit of a pain in the butt. I'll do it off camera. I don't need to waste more time on here, but you get the idea as far as how to clean and repack a Chris King headset. Next, we clean our race and our steer tube, right? You grab alcohol on a rag and you clean everything that you can from the steer tube. Okay, just make sure there's no grit anywhere around here. Now we put them back together. When it comes to assembly, here's one thing that people get wrong. 
they put way too much grease in their headsets, especially on the bottom. Folks, bearings don't need a lot of grease outside. They only need a thin, thin layer for protection, all right? Bearings work from the inside. The grease goes inside, it's contained within the seals, and ultimately the races allow the balls to go round and round and round as freely as possible, right? So we do not want to attract dirt, and grease attracts dirt. So it, it is amazing how many lower bearings I've seen absolutely destroyed because of over-greasing and dirt just grinding away at the seals, right? Which just destroy the bearings. We just want to take a little bit of a Q-tip, and this is too much on this Q-tip to be honest, and we just want to go around just like that. Okay, and we're going to wipe anything. I put way too much on this Q-tip. I didn't notice that. Let me take some out. And we're just going to give it a little bit of a coat. That's it. And even that, I'm telling you, is way too much. I'm going to wipe off some of this. All right, that's all we want to do. We just want to protect it from moisture. We want to do the same from the top and Although it's going to be hard to see, I'm going to do the exact same thing on the bottom. I'm just going to put a coat on the bottom. It's going to cover the whole outside and the inside of the bearing. If you, these bearings were in your hands exposed, you would just put a thin film on them before putting them in. All right. That's all we need. Now, when it comes to greasing the race, do not put too much grease on the race. In fact, a thin coat is all that is needed and only on the top part in here. You do not want any grease sticking outside of a race, right? The reality is whatever grease we just put on that lower bearing is gonna squeeze into little cracks on the race. We do not want grease sticking out, plain and simple. It's only gonna cause you trouble down the road, all right? So now that we have this greased, we're gonna take our shock and put it in, all right? So next, we have our head. Now, there is an O-ring in the head. Sometimes it could be a little bit stiff. This one fell in real nice, okay? So we're gonna put that in. We're gonna squeeze it down, squeeze, compress everything, right? So in this case, I had two spacers on the bottom. All right, then we're gonna take our steer and we're gonna twist them into place. Now make sure all the cables align as they should, right? Make sure they're in front of the fork, just like that. We're gonna put our steer in. Then I had two more spacers, one and two. Okay, unfortunately, this one's a little bit too short so I'm gonna put in the third spacer. I'll take care of that guy later in order to get the height that I need to lock down the top cap. I got the bolt in the top cap. Take out my five millimeter. We're gonna screw them down. Now, here's another mistake that people make. They over torque their headsets, plain and simple. You do not need a lot of torque. The whole goal is to, to eliminate knocking, right? And I, I mean, I've literally seen bearings squish so hard that the grease was coming out of the seals from the inside, okay? That's, that's a bad, bad thing. So from here, you should only need, once you feel it sort of touch bottom snug, give it about a quarter turn. And believe it or not, that's gonna be probably 95, if not 99% there until you get on the ground and give it the knock test, um, which I'll go over later, in order to ensure that you have absolutely no knocking in there and the most amount of turn, okay? So uh, next, let's put the rest back together. Now this guy here, we gotta be careful with him. So, why do I say we gotta be careful with him? He's very sensitive, it's very easy to strip and you don't wanna strip him because then you're gonna have to re-tap your boot. Not impossible, I've done it before pain in the butt. So make sure he's in there correctly, right? And then just lightly tie him down until he's finger tight. You do not need to go any more than finger tight. We're talking about one or two Newton meters here. That is it done. He will not come out, right? In fact, don't do him too tight yet. In fact, 
make it where he can move a little bit because we're going to need to adjust the cable when we tie the when we screw in the caliper all right which we are going to do next cable goes on the inside before i forget right make sure the cable does not go on the outside of the shock boot because you could snag it onto something right when riding so make sure it goes from the cable holder inside the uh fork and we place them on its mount so one don't fully tighten them yet and that is two now if you notice here i have a ton of slack right we don't want that slack okay so what we're going to do is we're going to take the cable and route it as tight as we can just like that make sure it's touching the wall okay and then we go back down and finish up the caliper don't over tighten the bolts here yet because you, later you're going to have to go back and adjust your calipers to your rotor right when everything is assembled so leave a little bit of slack just a little bit of slack right so tighten them to the end and take them out about a quarter turn if not an eighth of a turn just like that okay done so this way the caliper moves and this way when it comes to um aligning the rotor to the caliper it makes life a lot easier so the bike's back together I had tightened down, straightened out the, or aligned the stem with the front wheel and the fork, so everything's nice and straight. So now we test to see if we have play in our headset. We're listening to it for a knock. So grab your front brake, hold on to it. Now move the bike back and forth, right? Now, technically you could hear a bit of a knock, but ultimately that is not the headset. What that is, is the brake okay there's a little bit of play on the disc pads when you move them back and forth that's why i don't like testing headsets in this manner what i do is i turn the wheel at a 90 degree angle and then i rock back and forth if you have a loose headset you will absolutely know for sure by doing this that it is loose you will hear and feel a knocking okay in this case i don't feel any knocking whatsoever let me give you an idea what a knocking looks like because technically I had added in a spacer here. He was one millimeter short from full clearance. So he had a bit of a knock when I received the bike. Okay. And I'll give you an idea what that sounds like in a second. Okay. So I taken out that spacer that I mentioned, right? So now it's as it was when he uh, gave it to me. Again, if I press the front brake now, we definitely hear more of a knock, but to be 100% sure, turn the wheel sideways. And you could hear it. Not much. It's not a huge knock, but a knock nonetheless. Touching. So, but a knock nonetheless. That's the cable, actually. This cable's way too long. This bike's a bit of a mess, man. It needs a lot of cleanup. So, again, you do not want any kind of knocking. If you find that you can't get rid of play, that means that you do not have enough clearance from the top part of your stem to the top cap. Okay, or the top part of the steer tube to the top cap. Watch this. This is going to solve the problem immediately. Okay, screw this guy down. Again, fist tight. There we go. Your fist tight. Done. Solved. I'll turn this guy sideways, even without screwing the stem down. No play whatsoever. And I barely have any hard tension on the bearings. So then I could just screw down the line for now temporarily, the stem and time down and we are done. So let me show you one more thing, two more things. You do not want the steer tube to be flush with any spacers on the outside. You want space. In fact, I recommend always having three millimeters less steer tube than you do space on the outside, okay? By putting this extra spacer in there, I was able to compress with a little bit of effort the whole steer, including the bearings, in order to remove any play in the system. All right, so just remember that one. If you get any play that you torque this down and you still have play, that means your issue is going to be over here where you don't have enough space uh, in order to allow for compression because you're pretty much level or a little bit 
too high still on your steerer tube, okay? You just need, either need to cut your steerer tube or get a larger spacer to solve that problem. So let me show you one more thing before we call it a day. I wanted to talk about a tool that Park Tools sells, right? It's a dummy fork. Its job is to hold all the parts and pieces together when you remove the fork from the bike. Now, it's a convenient tool, but I will say, when you buy this brand new, it is a complete pile of useless crap, okay? Uh, why do I say that? One, it's too long, and it's just very inconvenient from a length perspective, but that's, that's, that's an easy fix. The big one, the diameter is too big. There are literally stems that I have not been able to fit on this thing, headsets that I've not been able to fit in this thing, okay? And I am not the only one. We're three people that have bought the same tools and had the exact, the same tool and have had the exact same issue, okay? So the way I got around it is I took a belt sander and I literally sanded the entire outside in order to shrink the diameter of this. So now it works real well. It's not all that bad. Way better than when I first bought it. Honestly, I was gonna throw it out, right? Because what pissed me off was I actually called up Park Tools on this so and spoke with Truman. And his response was, oh, okay, uh, yeah, well, it sounds like maybe we'll look into it, basically, is what he said, right? And I'm like, dude, I mean, I literally can't fit spacers on this thing. It's just ridiculous. So I don't know if they fixed them now, but I know we're three of us that have had it, and all three of us had the same fix, which was sand down as much as you can on the outside over here. So what I did, again, I sanded it down, I cut it, put a new star nut in there, and it's a lot more convenient now. But in the way it works, essentially, again, when you take apart a headset, we're gonna do that right now to give you an idea what it looks like, right? So we'll start off with loosen the stem bolts. Don't take them out. Take out your uh, tension bolt, right? And then remove everything in order, okay? Watch your fork doesn't fall. Okay. Now we remove the fork. Okay, I'm gonna put that down. And then I'm gonna take this guy and I'm gonna replace him. Let's see with Chris King, so far so good. So I'm gonna put the cap back on, not too bad. Actually this one, nope, we're good. Okay, so then I'm gonna put the spacers just how I found them. I'm gonna put the, uh, where are we? Yeah, we're here. I'm gonna put the stem. I'm gonna put the rest of the spacers and the top cap. And in my case, I have a lot less extra now than I had before. Before, I mean, I literally cut off a good solid four inches from this thing, if not more. It's just ridiculous. I mean, it literally was way too tall. All right, and that's it. So now I have everything together, nothing's flopping around, and ultimately I could go work on the fork, which I am gonna do for the next video anyway, but I just wanted to show you guys what this looks like, what the issues are. Again, is it worth the money? No, it's too expensive. Two, park tools, you gotta fix this crap, plain and simple, because it's unacceptable that you guys sell this like this, where you can't even fit a stem in there for crying out loud, and that's just not one stem, many stems. Envy stems, forget about it. You can't put them in at all uh, in a brand new dummy fork. So again, guys, I just wanted to show you that one and uh, hopefully you'll learn something of it. If you decide to go get it, again, you're gonna have to, most likely, unless they fix it, you're gonna have to sand down the outer diameter of the tube itself. And then you could cut it to whatever length you want. And the nice thing about cutting the tube short is what I can do is put a spare 30 millimeter spacer on there, have enough millimeters outside in order to put down the top cap and make everything nice and tight and snug. This way, everything doesn't flop around if you decide to move the bike or put it somewhere else, right? It sits in there nice and tight all together. So uh, really handy if you cut down this tube, all right? And there you have it, folks, a fully serviced headset. Again, not a hard job. The big one over here is don't 
over grease. You do not need anywhere near the grease that you think you need for a headset. Literally, you're applying only a thin film to the bearing walls. Applying more grease isn't gonna help the bearings spin quicker, man. The grease is on the inside, the bearings are on the inside, the races are on the inside. That's all protected. It's an internal mechanism that spins and spins and spins. Putting grease on the outside does nothing. All it'll do is collect dirt and essentially that will wear the bearings as the dirt makes its way inside and it will make its way inside, right? The other one is you do not need to crank down the tension bolt over here. Really, you'll be surprised how little um, pressure is needed in order to remove all play within a headset. There's not all that much. As long as it's properly um, cut at the steer tube and you have enough space, again, three millimeters is the max you need. Two millimeters, the absolute minimum. So anywhere between two and three millimeters will give you more than enough space for any top cap. I don't wanna say any, well, just about any top cap. I haven't tried all of them, obviously. Uh, in order to apply enough pressure where you're not killing the bearings, you're giving yourself the most amount of play that will lengthen the life of the bearings uh, on your headset, okay? That's the two big ones on this. Don't over grease, don't over tighten that. Folks, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. Uh, it's amazing to see more and more people around the world uh, watching the videos and learning something new and asking questions. Please, if there's questions out there that you have answers to, feel free to help others out. It would be much appreciated. Subscribe if you want to see more videos. Click the bell button, ding, 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 if you want to get reminded when new videos come out. All right, until then, hope all is well with everyone, and we will be talking to you soon. All right, take care. Have a good one. Bye.